Hey guys, it's Jeff Ware here, blokereview.com.au. I'm here on the sunny Gold Coast, uh, even though it's winter, you wouldn't believe it, um, riding the 2020 Suzuki Katana. So first of all, you've heard all the history of the Katana, you've heard everything about the old one, it was 40 years ago. So we're not going to touch too heavily on that. It's great that Suzuki have brought the Katana name back. Uh, there are some styling similarities, of course, but at the end of the day, this is an all new model. Um, and yeah, for sure, the Katana uh, crew are right into it. They're going to buy one just to stick in the lounge room next to their old Katana or to relive memories from their youth. This is a bike that's really good for a younger generation. Look, I'm 44 and I'd throw it at, you know, 25 to 45 year olds, 25 to 50, somewhere around that area. Um, you know, for me, I always owned a lot of GSX-R project bikes and long-termers. Then I had a GSX-S1000 and I'd be kind of looking at something like this for myself as a daily ride, a round town ride and something I could still have a fang on on the twisties. Um, I did have a GSX-S1000 for quite a long time for about a year. This is a slightly sportier uh, edge to it just because of the seating position. So I guess starting from the back to the front, the rear's more angled up when you sit on the bike. You're higher, the fuel tank's a lot narrower, and the handlebars are higher and more forward. So you do sit upright on it, uh, but it's like a motard stance almost. Uh, it's really actually quite cool. You're locked into the bike, but you can still hang off on the corners because it's got that narrow seat. The foot pegs are a fair way back, which I found really, really good in the tight twisty stuff today. But there was a bit of a compromise in all the other situations where I did get a little bit cramped. Uh, I'm 187 centimetres tall, but it was nothing the odd stretch of the legs couldn't deal with. And it's not a long distance bike anyway. Uh, which brings me to the point of the fuel tank. I've heard and read so much about this damn 12 litre fuel tank. Honestly, who cares? It looks really good, it's narrow, the bike's comfortable, why would you want to carry any more fuel anyway? Boo! We've been riding it all day and we've still got fuel to get back to our hotel, which is right over there somewhere. Um, and it's enough riding, there's petrol stations everywhere anyway. Yay! Ergonomically, very comfortable bike, even though the seat's a little bit firm, it does give that sporty feedback. Suspension's on the sportier side for a naked bike. Uh, but look, we were on some seriously bumpy roads today and for this price range uh, and this level of suspension, it performed admirably well over a wide range. So we were pushing it on some smooth, tight, slower speed twisties where we were well down in the stroke, braking hard into corners, accelerating hard off the corners and it was nice there. And then on the really fast, bumpy things, um, it was pretty good considering what it is and uh, we had no, no problems there at all. Plenty of grip from the Dunlop tyres, plenty of ground clearance as well for what it is. So overall, it's a, it's a good ride in the, from the sports side of things. Brakes are by Brembo, uh, which are fantastic. They're not super powerful Brembos. We've got a conventional master cylinder here, but they've got a good bite, not too much of an initial bite, which is perfect for this motorcycle. And then plenty of power there and you can modulate them really easily. It likes to be braked into the corners um, the ABS is fantastic. I tested that out purposely today a few times. And it's also a bike that likes a lot of rear brake. Uh, I was using a lot of rear brake today and it really responded to it, really bit down into the turns and loved that input from the rear brake. The forks are well up to the hard braking that you can use on this bike. Even with the riding position over the front like that, you can stop it rapidly with both ends on. Uh, it's very, very impressive there and it's quite a heavy bike as well. The handling characteristics, uh, it's neutral, it carries its weight really well, no surprises, big wide handlebars. Uh, it likes to be either at full lean or upright, it doesn't like to hover in that half committed halfway over area, it tends to want to stand up a bit there and bounce around a little bit, but once you grab it by the scruff of the neck and chuck it into that corner and commit, get it on its side and drive it off the turns. It really, really loves it. And it puts a big grin on your face. It's fantastic. And that's where the characteristics and the bones of the bike come to, come to light, which is the GSX-R1000. I mean, we've got a GSX-R1000 swing arm, 
a frame based on GSX-R1000 and, and all that technology Suzuki have learned over the years and that geometry gives this a real sporty edge. Suzuki say this is mainly an around town bike, uh, but you know what, it's not, in my opinion, uh, this is a hyper naked and it's a 150 horsepower inline four. It's got the brakes, it's got the suspension, it's got the grip, it's got the styling and the ground clearance. You can ride the balls off this thing. Uh, it's not a bike just to tootle around town on, in my opinion. I, I, you know, I'm an ex-racer, I'll be really happy with this thing in my local twisties any time, and it's more comfortable for someone my age, for sure. The dash is really cool, a little bit busy, uh, but it has that Katana styling. Um, the taco is shaped like the original Katana Speedo was. Uh, the only thing I could really see at a glance was speed and gear position. Unfortunately, everything else, uh, once we got up to high speed, was all a bit of a blur for me. So it's, it's a very funky looking cool dash, but just a little bit busy for me. Switch gear's easy to navigate. Uh, you've got your basic three modes. Uh, here, so your traction control one, two, three, and off. Uh, everything else is pretty simple to use. Standard Suzuki fare, good quality. Clutch lever is non-adjustable. I'd probably swap that out for one that's span adjustable because I wanted that a bit further out. Um, but everything else to me felt really comfortable. One thing that I did have to get used to on this bike, because it's such a high performance naked bike, it took me a while to get used to the fact there's no quick shifter because I, I hardly ride bikes these days that don't have quick shifters. And what this bike would really, really love would be a, an up and down quick shifter. It really needs one. And that'd be something I'd be keeping some money in the kitty to upgrade to myself if I bought one of these. And don't forget, in this price range, under 19,000 bucks right away, there's really nothing to match it. Uh, and that leaves you a bit of money there to upgrade to things like you want. If you want to buy a motorcycle, a four cylinder, 1000 cc naked bike that has the suspension, and the more high-tech electronics and the quick shifter, you're going to be well, well, well into the 20,000s, uh, you know, mid 20,000s. Finish is brilliant, front to back, excellent paint. Everything fits well. I've had a really good look over the fasteners, the welds. The whole thing looks really good to me. Certainly been no compromises in terms of styling. And the Japanese have really, really put a big effort in, considering they put this whole package together in 18 months or so. The gearbox is pretty good. These bikes have only got low Ks, around 300 kilometers on them. And you know, it's a typically good Suzuki gearbox. It's positive, no false neutrals. You know it's gonna go into gear. You know when it goes into gear, uh, but it doesn't like the clutchless shifts, or mine didn't today. I was using clutch on the way up, but I'm sure a few Ks would change that. That long stroke motor is a gem. It always has been. Everyone raves on about it being a K5, but as Suzuki have pointed out to us, it's just heavily revised. So let's just call it a long stroke 1000cc inline four. It's got the slipper clutch, which is great. You can run the thing into corners really fast. So that's fantastic. Clutch has got good feel. It's got the uh, takeoff assist or whatever it's called. It lifts 500 RPM as you let the clutch out in gear, which is unreal um, off the lights and around town. And we've had plenty of town riding 
today and we've had lots of red lights. Now the question everyone wants answered, was the throttle snatchy? Yes, the throttle is snatchy. Uh, is it improved on the GSX S1000? It is slightly improved on the GSX S1000. The best way around it is to short shift around town unless you're in a mad rush, because once you get it up into fourth gear, it's silky smooth. So it's only the low speed stuff, first and second gear, where it is uh, snatchy and abrupt, which makes town work quite tiring. And in and out of some of the hairpins today, look, if the, re if the throttle been closed for a period of time and I opened it again, there was an initial snatch. The way around that for me was to burn the rear brake, which is what the rear brake's for. The rear brake's to use, be used, use it. I used the rear brake all day and it was as though there was no throttle snatch at all. So as far as I'm concerned, it's not an issue. It's something you can really easily ride around. Of course, if things do go wrong, you've got the traction control there to back you up, which, as I said, has three settings. I rated it on two today. I tried out three, I tried out one, I settled on two. You can also switch it off to do some wheelies and have a bit of fun. Anyway, that's about it. Check out bikereview.com.au for the full review. Thanks for watching this video. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Give us a like and hit that notification bell. Have a great day. See you later.